Hey, what is up guys? So I've got a question for you today. Do you have a particular listing goal as you wade through the difficulties of, of reselling and you know all the hub drub day to day? I know it's the hardest part for a lot of us. It's very fun to get out and source, but sometimes it's hard to hold ourselves accountable to getting all that stuff up on the selling platforms. So that's the question today. Let's take a look at that and a little bit more as we get into today's video. Man, I tell you what, being consistent with listing is one of the hardest things I think to master as a reseller. I have been up and I have been down. I have been at it hard sometimes and sometimes I get those hub drugs, man. I just, just can't hardly get myself motivated to do it. Uh, everyone's got different advice and different opinions and I'm telling you, you can glean so much from all of it because I really think it takes a mixture. We're always evolving as a reseller. We're always exploring new strategies and new ideas and honestly for me, if I don't mix it up a little bit from time to time, then I get bored. So we have to do what works best for us, but most assuredly, guys, when it comes to listing, you've got to be consistent. I can tell you from my own personal experience, when I get that that you know weary feeling toward listing and I begin to slow down, my sales slow down, my store underperforms, but when I'm on top of things and I'm really knocking it out every day listing, my store always performs better. I always have more sales and I make more money. And I mean, isn't that the goal after? After all, we're trying to not only maximize our output, maximize our money made, but do so in the most efficient way. And so listing guys, again, so important. We're going to take a look at a few of these different strategies. One of them that I would say that is often used by resellers is to have a numerical goal. Some people say, you know, well, at the minimum, just list every day. Now, I'm not saying you can list one item every day and always be great. But I have heard that said that at the very least, make sure you have activity and that you list every day. But the majority of resellers that use a listing goal that is numerical, it all depends on your situation. If you're a hobbyist, if you're part-time, full-time, most of the time we all have different situations, right? Some are retired and kind of, you know, ride the wave of, of, you know, however they feel. But if you want your store to perform consistently, find a consistent groove. I think that's really important. Whether it's five a day, 10 a day, 20 a day, 30 a day, 50 a day, some of these operations that are full-time and have employees, guys, I mean, they're knocking out way more than that, but they have listing goals. That's one of the first ways I think that you can approach that. Let's take a look at something that sold. I wanna show you this. It has occurred to me in my filming brilliance that I forgot to even tell those of you who may be first time watchers who I am. So my name is Josh. This is Bama J Bird Resale and thank you for joining me today. Let's get back into the video. All right, so I wanted to show you just a couple of sales that I had over the weekend. It was actually a pretty good weekend. Um, I had 16 sales for $678.70. And you know, I know that I'm still small fry when it comes to moving inventory and making sales, but I'm proud of what I am selling. And I just wanna share with you how my listing strategies have affected my sales because what I have seen recently was a huge slump in sales. But guys, with everything else I've had going on, what I have found is that the more inconsistent I've been and the less I've listed, the less I've sold. All right guys, so I actually had a pretty good weekend of sales. I had a $678.70 total value of sales, 16 items. And there's two or three that are really cool that I wanna share with you. We won't go through all of them. I don't wanna bore you to death, but I want to remind you, first of all, you know, we, we talk about music and whether or not music will sell, whether or not CDs sell. This all sold over the weekend, all this, every bit of it. So first of all, it will sell. I put out a video recently talking about uh, bundling and lots, and I do think it's important. I do have some individual sales in this, and if it's got a good value and a good sell through rate, I will list a CD or any other piece of media as an individual sale. But what I'm finding more and more is that if you learn about that genre and you can lot appropriately, uh, similar artists, similar genre, uh, similar musical style, maybe uh, soloist slash band members, band and their soloists as they broke away from each other. There's just so many creative ways to list in the group and people that are real, you know, music aficionados that know those particular people and those groups and those eras or those sounds, those styles, they like those types of lots and it helps the things to move. I'm telling you, and move for better money because they save a lot on shipping when they can buy a group. So the first one I wanna show you 
This was my highest dollar sale over the weekend. This is 10 CDs by Gene Clark. And you may not be able to see these, but Gene Clark, 10 different recordings here. And these sold for $175.50, $175.50. I thought that was excellent, guys. I was excited about that sale. Now, again, uh, listing, listing, man, it makes such a big difference. I think about you know all the times that you know my store's been riding high, and it's always been when I've been the most consistent. And I'll be honest with y'all, while I have tried to set goals like one, just to list every day, uh, two, I've tried uh, for a long time to have like a minimum of 10. I've never done the thing where I said, okay, if I get to 10, I'm gonna stop. If I've got plenty of time and I'm in my groove, then I'm more likely to keep listing. Now, I know a lot of people like to use the uh, draft bank, and I'm, I would never discourage you from that. If it's really important for you to always have a certain number every single day, then I think that's a good strategy because on the days where you're really pushing through and getting a lot of listing done, that can be an awesome, awesome way to build up listings that you can release on days that you're outsourcing, days that you're spending a long time packing and shipping, or you're just busy with other chores and activities. And so it helps you maintain that consistency because listings will be released on the daily if you have a large draft bank. My good friend Caleb, he tends to use that, and lots of other people. I know uh, Ben Rocky Top Picker, he's a big advocate of the draft bank. Uh, lots and lots of resellers are big on the draft bank. Uh, J-Ride, he uses it. So that being said, I don't really use the draft bank myself. Um, I tend to, I'm, I'm more of, if you've got it ready, get it listed. List it now. Why would I sit on it if I can sell it today? Now, the problem with that for me is sometimes it leads to some inconsistency in the number of listings that I release on the daily or that I get up on the daily. And sometimes I may even have a day or two where I fail to get something listed due to circumstances beyond my control. I mean, I have a ton going on. I've mentioned this uh, in a chat recently, you know, that even though I technically am full time as a reseller, this is the only thing that I'm doing to earn my living or my portion of our living here at home. Um, I do have other responsibilities that swallow up a huge amount of time and uh, it is really hard to devote full time hours and sometimes my days are unpredictable. Uh, because of those circumstances and many of you out there that watch my videos and that interact with me online Y'all know what I'm talking about now that being said I'm by no means complaining I'm just kind of throwing that out But what I have learned as a reseller is that it is important to list as often as possible and to be as consistent as possible guys If you don't list consistently you won't be successful uh, Some of my friends uh, Grams and Pops Corey and Teresa They released a video here a while back that you need to check out uh, where they went over their strategy that they had employed for, I think it was 12 months for a full year, where they were trying to list $500 worth of inventory per day. So that was their minimum. They were going to list $500 in value, whether it took five items, 50 items, whatever, $500 in value. And um, it had a huge impact on their sales. It had a huge impact on their turnover and, and, and on their margins as far as profit and, and making, you know, the living that they need to make. Everyone's situation, again, is different. Everyone's bills are different. Everyone is, everyone has a different goal in mind. You know, I, I would, I would say this too, you know, what we're talking about listing, you know, you're listing, uh, the effort you put into listing will affect your income, obviously, right? As a reseller. But you know, if one person is, is content with making, you know, $40,000 a year as, as what they actually take out of what they sell or say 30,000, you know, that's, that's your prerogative. You can feel fine with that. And if you're good with that and it does what you need it to do for you, you pay your bills, you know, that's great. I, I commend you. Um, I'm not about selling out to the dollar. Some people, it's all about make as much as you, as you can. Um, and I, I mean, we are in the business of making money. I wouldn't be doing this if there wasn't a way to make money out of it. But you know, my ambitions toward money have always been less than maybe some other people's. Um, my goal is just to have enough so that I can do the things that are necessary. And then I like to have my time free as much as possible to spend it with family and do other things to me that are more meaningful than, than just spending all my time working. However, I do realize that the more we put into this, the more we get out of it. Let me show you another sale. Well, two more sales, and then we'll finish up with our topic. But I, I mentioned recently, I had some, um, a couple of videos about vintage Levi's and I'm going to go back and and do a couple of videos, two or three in a series where I tell you some of the styles to look for that sell the best. And uh, we're, I'm working on that now. So be looking for those videos. They're gonna drop. I will probably add them to the playlist I started for the vintage Levi's and just have a Levi's playlist. But 
This is a vintage pair of 501s. Maybe kind of hard to see. I'll put some thumbnails up of these things. But this is a vintage pair, and uh, these are made in USA. They're not super old. These are probably uh, from the 90s, I think, is what the, the era of these, the late mid-late 90s. But I've told you in the past, you know, that these sell really well. And these, this particular pair of Levi's sold for 40 bucks. Now, I know on some sites, uh, there's probably places I could get more for these. And in fact, if you look at sold comps on Levi's 501s and some others from the 90s, you will see some outliers that are much higher than just $40. But I have found that if I price them up way too high, I sit on them for a very long time. And so, you know, depending on the age, if they got a really high value, now if they're like, you know, from the, you know, if they're salvage or if, you know, I happen to stumble across a big E item, then I'm gonna price that at market value and wait on it. But if I'm not gonna split hairs over 10 to $15. It's more important to me to move it, but 40 bucks is still good for a pair of used jeans, guys. So as many times as you can find made in USA vintage 501s, you're gonna be able to move them for 35 to $40 pretty good most of the time. Um, you may sometimes take some offers at 30 maybe, but, but again, if you can get into them for five, six dollars, maybe less than that, uh, you can do really well on them, all right? The last item that I wanna show you is this vintage Russell Athletic Gatorade jersey. This is that old mesh. You remember back when, you know, in the uh, 80s and 90s, early 90s, I guess we should say, uh, the football jerseys that had the big holes, you know? So that's what this is like. This is that old fashioned, old style jersey and it is made in USA, super, super cool. Got the big uh, lightning bolt on it. I just thought this was awesome, man. When I saw this, this is only like $5, five or six bucks. I can't remember exactly now. Seems like it was $5.99. Uh, might've even been less than that, but I got this at one of my local like big thrift stores, like big name thrift stores. Um, it's called America's Thrift Store here in Alabama. And uh, I was kind of surprised to see it on the rack. Uh, we don't have a lot of jerseys that come in here. And so the area where they normally accumulate at, uh, what little bit that, that will come in, there's often nothing there. But I always check because you never know when you're going to run across something like this. And this was awesome. I had this listed up like around 130 bucks, I think, or something like that. I got an offer of $110. So for this vintage Gatorade jersey, $110. Guys, isn't that awesome? That is such a cool, cool item. And uh, I'll put a thumbnail up of that or a screenshot so you can kind of see that a little closer. So that's three items to look out for. I'll tell you what, I'll throw one last one in just in case you don't know about these. So I do have this Case Logic tape case. This is two-sided. I think it holds like 60 tapes. And uh, you don't overlook these. They're not huge or huge money value, but if they're in really good shape and clean, they sell pretty well. This one I think has close to 100% sell through or maybe a little over 100%. And uh, that's at $25 plus shipping. So that's not bad. I gave three bucks for this. So three and a 25 plus shipping. I've got some other good sales. I sold a couple of Nintendo 64 Rumble Packs. I sold some uh, aluminum jello molds or whatever you want to call them um, that I gave like two dollars for like I said I got several other CDs uh, a few decent sales in that but overall good sales all right now, so like I told you earlier consistency is really the key if you're not consistent with your listings then you're not going to have consistent store performance and I am a great example of that if if anyone has experienced the difference between uh, consistent store performance and inconsistent due to my own failures. It's me. I promise you. I promise you. I've been there more than once. Um, I, I think, you know, anytime you're working for yourself, it's important to have good discipline. And, uh, you know, usually that's not something I struggle with, but I'm telling you, it's, it's different. Like in every public job I've ever done, I've always been ahead of kind of ahead of the curve or I've been, you know, like the, you know, the go-getter. And I'm by no means not saying that I'm not a go-getter in doing the reselling thing, but it's a lot different story when you're having to hold yourself accountable. So it is important, I think, to set goals. Set reachable goals, but set goals. And you got to figure out what works best for you, whether it is a number of items per day, whether it is an, a dollar value per day. I do like the idea of listing every day. I have advocated for that in the past. But I do think now more than ever that it's just important that we list, that we list as much as possible, as often as possible. You know, I think for me, and I've seen others do this, I know I've seen like Lunny and Candace do it on Shed Flips, uh, where they'll set up a momentum board, and on that momentum board, they kind of track, you know, how much they're listing, how much they're selling, that kind of thing, uh, to hold themselves accountable. Like they're wanting to achieve a certain amount by a certain time frame. And so they don't so much go with, I want this many per day or this or what, but it is about a time frame. So 
I think for me that probably in my situation because it's very hard for me not knowing exactly how each day is going to play out. It's very hard for me to have a daily goal because I have a hard time just treating this like a nine to five, you know, like some of you are able to. So I think what I'm going to do is try to come up with a plan to hold myself accountable on a time frame. So I'm thinking like on the weekly or on the monthly, I want to set a goal for both dollar value and number of items that I want to hit by the end of that time frame. maybe each week or like I said, maybe by the month, because that allows me some flexibility to deal with the unexpected things that may come up um, due to my circumstances and, and situation that I have. And like I said, everyone's is different. You've got to be able to not only understand your situation, but craft a plan that fits it well. I have experienced this, you know, over these last couple of years, both as a part-time and now trying to be a full-time reseller, that it's very easy to watch someone else and say, man, that plan is awesome. What they're doing works great. I'm going to do that. And then you set that bar for yourself and you quickly find yourself not able to do that. And look, defeat is one of the worst feelings that you have to deal with in life at all, especially when you're working for yourself. You want to feel success uh, and, and truly you need to experience success if you want to stay in this. You need to have that. It's a motivating factor and it's very, very motivating to experience success. So we need to set a goal that demands something of ourselves, one that is, is you know, not going to be too easy but we also need to make sure it is reachable because I do think that is important. So anyway, that's what I'm planning to do. Let me know again in the comments, like I said, what you think. Uh, I, I don't know what your typical routine is like. And I mean, I'm interested because I want to get a routine established for myself that I know that I can be successful at, but that also holds me accountable. And I hope that maybe in watching this video, maybe it'll inspire you to buckle down, uh, come up with a plan if you don't have one, if you've been letting yourself down, maybe rethink how you have your listing goals set and set goals you can reach, but goals that hold you accountable as well. Guys, I enjoy it. Love you guys so much. I appreciate all of you. Uh, like I told you in the last video, I am going to be doing a live pretty soon. It'll probably be in the middle of August sometime. I'm really hoping that after the meetup, uh, I can get this all put together, but to celebrate the thousand subscribers, uh, I don't know where I'll be by then, but hopefully a good bit more than that. And I'm really, really hoping that I can get my hours requirement in and be monetized by the time I do that. So it can kind of be a dual celebration, but there'll be some giveaways. I'm also planning on uh, this week, be watching for my next video that drops later in the week because I will be starting a, a giveaway with that video as well, just as a thank you to all of you that have helped me and all of you that watch. And for right now, that's all I got for you. But again, guys, I love you. God loves you. Whatever you do, guys, don't you ever, ever give up. And I will see you on the next one.